Hi, friends. I mean, hi, friends. And welcome to Rocking with Tamus People. Suppose an Eric from a starter dungeon in the boonies moved to a starter town. I mean, suppose an Eric from the last dungeon in the boonies moved to a starter town. Now, there's a good concept for a show. <laughs> I just finished watching that last night. Suppose a kid from the last dungeon boonies moved to a starter town, which is a really calm, really long title. <laughs> yeah, we are rocking with fans people today. All right, we are rocking. Why am I smoking this cigarette? You know what I haven't done yet this morning? I've already smoked a cigarette this morning. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's why I had to go get more because I ran out of some kind of last year this morning. Um, but what I haven't done this morning, hi, Legends Hole. I haven't moved from the boonies where the last dungeon is to a starter town. But also, more importantly, I haven't pulled my first bong rip. Yeah. Utter self, hello. You know, I had such an interesting day yesterday typing. I had two typing sessions yesterday. And they turned out to be two types that I don't usually get to type. I had an ISTJ in the morning who thought she was an INTP, of course. It always happens with ISTJs. <laughs> and uh, then I had an ISTP um, in the evening. And what was what's nice about that is... You have a little bottle. Okay. Um, what's nice about that is the the any polar is so just um, incredible. You know, it's like same with SI polar. It's so incredibly clear what's going on there. Um, I was thinking after doing those typings, I would like to either go through past typing sessions or get a couple people like Utter Self, for example, or Legends Fall and go, here's what second slot TI looks like. Here's what dominant NE looks like. Because, you know, for an ISTJ, they think, well, they're pretty good at um, TI. And they're not bad, but... Um, nobody wants to be an ISTJ, you know? Of course, the IS... <coughs> the ISTJ... <coughs> Self-identified as being creative, you know? But when I actually said to her, you know what? I lied. I didn't smoke my last cigarette this morning. I smoked my second to last cigarette this morning. Oh, it's a little surprise from you for you from the universe. I could have waited a little bit longer to go get the cigarettes. <laughs> ESTJ versus INFP. Who's going to win? They're both great dynamite performers. Um, here's the thing about the ISTJ's SI as well. When an ISTJ is informed they're an ISTJ, they typically will say things like, but... I've had this experience that contradicts what type descriptions say. I've had that experience that, type, that contradicts what type descriptions say. <coughs> and it's like, well, good news. You're doing exactly what ISTJs do. It just confirms my position on the matter. Of course, the thing is, at the end of that session, I actually told her I wasn't sure if she was an ISFJ or an ISTJ. And the reason I told her that was because she was um, Indian, maybe, or Pakistani or something like that. 
or uh, one of those places over there, like uh, maybe um, where's that place where they make all the clothes? Indonesia. Indonesia or uh, Vietnam. There's one other place I'm trying to think of. There's so many. There's one place in particular I'm trying to think of. Oh. Uh, it's like India and Pakistan. It's called Bangladesh. Thank you. Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Bangladesh. So maybe they're from one of those places, right? I have a hard time reading the Effie poor when you're not a Native American, basically. Because every culture has a different understanding of Effie. And so she seemed very Effie flat to me, but I didn't really, it's harder for me to pick up the the epipolar. What has to they wear? <laughs> well, I, I typed the guy's, the, the lady's dad before, and he wasn't wearing any hat. When I typed the lady, I'm not sure if she had on uh, something over her her hair or if that was just her hair. She, oh, yeah. Sometimes they wear. She had either long hair long black hair, or there may have been like a black thing over her hair. I'm not sure. I wasn't paying that much attention, obviously, that people's hats. But unless you got a great hat like the Albanians. Now, if you got a fantastic hat like the Albanians, then okay, fine. I'll pay attention to your hat. <laughs> um, it's a good question, by the way. <laughs> it's a very important question. <laughs> No, it would be like like uh, cover your hair maybe because you're Muslim or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. It would be something like that, I suspect. I, I don't know anything about these people. I don't know why she had something on her head. I don't, I'm just speculating here, okay? I have no idea. Maybe she just liked to cover her head with a black thing. Or maybe that was just actually her hair. <sighs> or just very straight black hair. It could have just been very straight black hair. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, enough about the hat, yourself. You're getting me all off topic. This is actually a wig. That's a wow. Yeah. I said, give me the most realistic looking wig you can find. <laughs> <laughs> I said, will this do? I said, perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, it's, um, I really need to have a repertoire of, like, th well, if, if I weren't wearing this wig, I'd be completely bald, okay, Ron Allen Salon. <laughs> That's why I wear this wig. <laughs> it's called Believably Balding. <laughs> 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 it's the new hair club for men. Believably balding. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why those guys in those hair commercials don't seem to notice the fact that their hair looks incredibly fake? Well, I'll tell you why. I wondered that too. That's why I started Believably Balding. The new hair club for men that makes you look totally like you're going bald. But less than you actually are. Chest toupee. Oh. Listen, I don't need a chest toupee or stuff because look at these. I got, what do you call these? Real chest hairs. Look at that. Real chest hairs. See them? <laughs> See those hairs? Those are real. Real chest hairs. <laughs> It's called being a man of yourself, being a manly man. Okay. I like to kill things and shit in my bed. It's called being a man. <laughs> That's what real men do. They kill things and shit in their beds. 
<laughs> well, if that's the minimum number or so. If you got, you've reached the threshold. You need at least three. Okay. Okay. You have three Chester as your man. If you only have two, you're still a little boy. Or you shave it. Then you go back to childhood. You immediately revert to infancy. All right. Did I even pull a bowl yet? Oh, my God. What is wrong with me? <laughs> well, what well, in the world? Cigarettes, so. What in the world is wrong with me? <laughs> you know, it's really one of the main things in the morning that makes me decide to live stream instead of um, instead of watching anime is, well, <clears throat> I always like to live stream when I pull, pull enough bowls usually, you know. I talk about the relationship between Ayn Rand and Karl Marx. It was a, it was a volatile love affair. Obviously, Marx was the sub. Ayn Rand was known as one of her generation's greatest dominatrixes. Um, she didn't. She didn't leave the house without some means of inflicting pain on a simpering male. Marx, naturally, history's most simpering of all males, uh, was a perfect match for her. It was love at first sight. They had three children. <coughs> Their three children being uh, <coughs> Keynesian economics, anarcho-socialism, and. <laughs> Anarcho capitalism. Those are their three kids. They're they've been battling over the inheritance ever since. Does that answer your question, Broccoli Toad? It should. It's all gonna be on the test, by the way, so take notes. I tell you who's rich. You know who's really, really rich? The In N Out Burger heiress. She's really rich. She's the granddaughter of the person who started In N Out Burger. She has a a five acre spread in Bradbury that would just blow your mind. She's selling it right now for seventeen point eight million. Rachel and I are considering starting a GoFundMe. Good... All we need to do is raise eighteen million dollars. That's it. And we can live in that house. <laughs> then we'll have to raise another million dollars a year for property taxes, I'm sure. Why is she leaving it? Um, I guess she's just got got bored with that bit of luxury. She's worth billions. So, <laughs> I mean, why do they do things like that? Who knows why billionaires do what they do? Yeah, that's true. Do you think I've got a good chance of raising $18 million for a luxury home and go find me? <laughs> You never know. I'm going to find you. you never know. It might catch fire, right? Eric and Rachel want to live on this five-acre spread with multiple tennis courts and shit in Bradbury. Uh -huh. And we promise to have a lot of parties. Everybody who contributes to the GoFundMe page is invited to all the parties if we can get to $18 million. You think that would get us $18 million on GoFundMe? Work compressor. <laughs> well, fat. I tell you something. You complain about my audio one more time. Uh oh. I'm gonna randomly switch these little switches on the mic. <laughs> then see how you like it. I don't know what it's gonna sound like then. I'm not even really sure what they do. <laughs> I'm so terrible about gear. You know, it's like for somebody who has made so much music and recorded so much shit, I really don't know anything at all about gear. <laughs> I'm just not a gearhead. My INFJ friend Corey was way more of a gearhead than me. And he's an INFJ. I, just, I don't know what it is about me that I just am so disinterested in gear. Well, 
like the less is more. I'm not. It's not a personal theory. It's not a preference or something. Like, if I had a preference, I would have more instruments than a guitar, than an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Believe me, I would have Never more like. stuff. But uh, it's just, I... I never seem to, to get enthusiastic about gear. You know, it's like I never, I was much more enthusiastic yesterday about going and buying a couple more fish for our fish tank <laughs> than I ever am about buying a guitar or something like that. Yeah. That always seems like a drag. Like, oh shit, I'm going to have to get something that I'm going to live with for a long time and that I'm going to have to be happy with for a long time. It's going to be expensive. And that seems like a lot of pressure to choose the right thing. Wow. I wouldn't have thought you. I just. I always see it as like gift giving and like having material items, not really your thing, but I guess. It's it not, is. but but the only exception is tools and gear. But I'm, but at the same time, even though I like tools and gear and when I have them, it's great. I, I have no, I never buy them. I buy all kinds of random shit, but I never buy that. What happens when INFJs be suppress FE because they like TI? Well, they don't really suppress FE. They just express their FE in much more TI form. And what you get is Sam Harris. Sam Harris is an INFJ who talks all the time in um, TI talk. Oh, you guys are so cute. Out herself. I'm going to give you a chance to retract that statement. <laughs> I'm pretty sure saxophones are not kind of cool. There are a couple of exceptions. Billy Joel seems to use saxophones pretty well. It's true. Steely Dan occasionally uses saxophones pretty well. But by and large, a saxophone is the best way to turn whatever it is you're making into smooth jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always a mistake. <laughs> Nobody wants to listen to smooth jazz. My dad does. But if if my dad's your target audience. Okay, now you went too far, yourself. Kind of cool sometimes. Okay, I could live with that. Awesome? You are abusing the word awesome, sir. You are abusing that word. Saxophones are not awesome. Awesome? What's awesome then if saxophones are awesome? I'll tell you what's actually pretty awesome. Oboes. <laughs> you know, I was watching. I never would have Oh, that is such a lie. Other self. Okay, it's not a lie, but look. As soon as you master the saxophone, from that point forward, Noam Chomsky is an ENFP. From that point forward, um, you sleep with nothing but cougars once you master the saxophone. That's true. As a dude, you get nothing but cougars. Is that what you want on yourself? You want nothing but cougars for the rest of your life? He had one good idea. Everything else he does is not T.I. justified. I saw a movie that Noam Chomsky made about how, you know, basically corporations control the media. He did not make a single solid link in the entire movie. Oh, I know. Well, Lee Trimmer, I agree. I think that the, the next Cobra Kai is Pokemon Midlife Crisis. <laughs> Sense. Right, where Ash is, Ash has gone full otaku now. He's he's gotten rather chubby. He sits in front of his computer and he he just basically chats on message boards about the Pokemon's that he has. Michael Moore is another ENFP. What I meant to title this, Sky Gear, was Eric from the Last Dungeon, 
moves to a starter YouTube channel or something like that. <laughs> I miss Tide a little, little bit. But um, I got to tell you, I would not be misleading you at all if I strongly encouraged you to watch this show with the ridiculous title, Suppose a Kid from the Last Dungeon Boonies Moved to a Starter Town. <laughs> That's like it does sound ridiculous. I'd seen I'd seen the title before. I just rolled my eyes at it. Nothing I want to watch. Blah, blah, blah. I was so wrong. It's hilarious. It is so funny, and it's also got your normal action-packed magic stuff. But um, it plays with all of the anime tropes so so hilariously. Of course, it's got the. The nose bleed every time someone. <laughs> well, that's why Ash is always covered with electrical burn, sleep trimmer. Okay. <laughs> Ash is into co erotic electro asphyxiation. I need to make a pot of coffee. That means I need to get another can of coffee from the garage as well. I can't hear you right now. Hold on. Say again. I said talk amongst yourselves. Oh. Yeah, so you guys, can you talk amongst yourselves briefly? I'll be right back. Before I make a pot of coffee, I'd like to share a few words about U-Ban coffee. U-Ban gold, so much better than Folgers. I put a few uh, pieces of green bean in there last night. Oh! It appears that Lilu has has dragged a piece of green bean into his show. I was wondering what the heck that was. <laughs> He's so funny. I put three little pieces of green bean in there, and. Uh, it appears to be he's used it as both wall and food source concurrently. He really likes to wall off his shell, but nothing else can get in there. Yeah, he really does. He does not like to get bothered by any other creature in there. Oh, and I, I should tell the internet as well that I told Rachel. Um, Last, last night, after I turned off all the lights and everything, I was lying here watching some anime. And then I got up for some reason, 
and I got to watch Lelou. He had trapped in his claws a little guppy, and it got away, but he was going to eat it, obviously. I probably, I probably, my interference probably helped to get away, really, but. That's exciting, though. Yeah. Crayfish definitely eat guppies is the conclusion we can draw from that. Yep. And those blue babes, they like to, they, I see them every once in a while, they'll get like really close to a guppy in the book. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and we got a couple of cichlids as well. We got four of them, actually. Now, apparently cichlids don't necessarily go well with crayfish, but we got four very small ones. Uh, eucalyptus koala, you seem to understand Noam Chomsky correctly. Imagine if Eric forgets to kill the stream and leaves the camera on one day. It would be so boring. No, actually, I don't think it would be because you've had napping streams and they were really popular. <laughs> Finally, a stream where Eric doesn't talk. Um, the thing is, uh, yeah, Chomsky's kind of an idiot who thinks he's smart. Um, I think INFJs have potentially very good TI capabilities, as per Sam Harris, you know. But even when they're doing so, they're, in my opinion, like Sam Harris overvalues TI. He's trying to totalize TI. And then you get somebody like uh, Jordan Peterson. He's trying to totalize TENI. You know, it's like, I don't care who you are and what you're trying to totalize, suck it. Does that make sense to everybody It should, right? Like, stop trying to totalize your shit. Just because it's your way doesn't mean everybody should be like that. And that that's basically the problem of all of human history, right? It's like, everybody's going, well, this is my way, so everybody should be like that. When I'm telling people, like... um we should listen to me about politics. I'm saying because of this particular context and the specifics of it, the proper approach to dealing with it is meh. That's very different than like what Jordan Peterson is, is doing or Sam Harris. Jordan Peterson going, you need to go out and slay dragons. Well, what about the dragons for God's sakes? Okay, come on, Rain. There's no way Chomsky's an INTP. All you have to do is watch that movie that he made, maybe 92 or something he made it. I don't know. 91, I don't know. And you will see zero TI. A bunch of putting stuff next to each other and hoping that association establishes a link. Okay, Rain, fuck off. <laughs> He's saying, Noam Chomsky, I said, Noam Chomsky is an ENFP. Rain says, I think you're being biased in your timing because INTPs can have shit reasoning as well. I said, again, Noam Chomsky's not an INTP. He said, I, I, I didn't say he was. Read my words, Eric. Okay, fine. But the point is, there's never been an INTP in history with that shitty reasoning. And part of the reasoning for judging him as an ENFP is because his reasoning is that shitty. So, no. I don't remember what the title of it was. I actually saw it in the theaters when I was in college. And my friend, my ISFP friend, said to me, walking out of the theater, but what's the mechanism? My, my ISFP friend said that to me. Yeah, INFJs can have shitty TI too. It depends how much you want to focus on your third slot. Look at Obama. He had pretty damn good FE, right? 
He's an ENTP with pretty good, pretty damn good FE. Yeah. Oh, you think Chomsky's an INFJ? Not impossible, but unlikely. I mean, yeah, Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader and Chomsky remind me of each other a lot, you know? They're both idiots with, an, with passion. <clears throat> Which is basically maybe a... Uh, it's like you could, you could describe ENFPs as smart idiots with passion. You describe ESFPs as dumb idiots with passion. I think that's fair. <laughs> I think that's fair and just. It's fair, just, righteous, and true. I don't think anybody's going to dispute that. <laughs> I don't know enough about Chomsky, really. I'm just judging him on basically that movie and a couple of his linguistics things, you know? So maybe I'm jumping to conclusions about Chomsky. That's certainly plausible. I've been known to see a conclusion and initiate a leap towards it, perhaps with insufficient deliberation. I've been known to do that. It's happened on occasion before. Oh. It's what a little something I like to call jumping to conclusions. You only know Noam Chomsky from Left for Dead 2. <laughs> has a character called G-N-O-M-E Chomsky. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, my ISFP friend saw right through the charade. I was sort of still processing it, you know. Um He's a literal garden gnome. That's funny. <laughs> That's about all he's good for, that Noam Chomsky. <laughs> that dastardly Noam Chomsky. Well, you know what's coming on today in about an hour and 15 minutes? No. Is the, the one game today that I most want to see, which is Oregon State versus uh, that team with sister whatever oh loyola loyola, loyola chicago. chicago loyola chicago um so i'm really excited to see that oregon state loyola chicago game it's the 12 versus an eight seed oregon state way under seeded at 12 i think oregon state's going to win the game personally i'm hoping so i'd love i'd love to see the pac 12 we can only actually have a maximum of three people make it to the Three teams make it to the Elite Eight because Oregon has to play USC. Oh. So only one of those two teams will advance. But uh, regardless, as a Pac-12 fan, both basketball and football, I uh, am very excited by this year's tournament. And I got my, my ship jumping karma. This is the one year I didn't do my yearly bracket where I pick all Pac-12 teams all the way to the win. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, you jump ship on your your loyalty like that, and you get immediately karma. Yeah, but the karma is but it's, them. It's <laughs> good. I'll, I'll lose my brackets in exchange for a Pac-12 win. No problem. Um, is that bad, T.I.? Yes, that's fine, though. That's bad. I really want to give you a cheap one. Please do, my darling. Remember, my darling, here is where the blossom of our love blooms. It's true. It is true. <laughs> Rachel and I have a good relationship. It's true. It is. And, you know, I think pretty rare, really. 
I think fairly rare for people to have uh, an unusually good relationship where we just genuinely seem to be uh, thoroughly pleased by each other's presence, you know, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, like when I woke up this morning and I saw you next to you, I was like, oh. Hey, Ray, listen. My extremities are not tangents. They're part of my body. And my analogies are who I am. Okay? So don't try to put me in a box. Please. I'm tired of people putting me in boxes constantly. Boxy to. I know. I'm always cramped. That's why you're so tall, because your personality is so big. I have a big personality. One thing, there was some kind of mini drama yesterday that I sort of downplayed, I guess, but would like to talk a little bit more about is Mackenzie Hoffman's scathing review of Sean's typing of her. <laughs> it was, I think, justified. Well, I mean, I, you know, the thing that I made note of is that uh, she complained that basically he didn't let her talk. He just extroverted at her the whole time. I've heard that from people who come in to type, get typed by me before. Uh, just a few ladies ago, there was an INFJ who said, uh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, but from what she said, they, they made a video, and I'm not sure if he published it. So, that sounds like a typing to me. Let me guess at yourself, we're all one. We're just not seeing it clearly enough. Are we all one? I mean, well, it goes to show you what people don't understand about T.I. <coughs> why would she be troll? Why would he be trolling her? Why? To what end? I mean, I haven't found it to be a troll with me. I found it to be somewhat difficult sometimes. But I've not found him to be somebody who's attempted to troll me in any obvious way. I mean, I think you're broadening the term troll a little too much, perhaps. Although I don't see him and he's not around me, obviously. So, I don't know. Um, I mean, if that's doing the job right, pissing off Mackenzie Hoffman by saying stupid shit that makes no sense, then I am again brought back to the question, why does he think that's going to help him be perceived better? Does he not care? Is he just creating wreckage for no reason? I mean, when you say that he's trolling, that the thing that that affords him that I don't agree with 
is that he knows he's talking bullshit. Um, I don't think that's your FI it soothes ourselves. I think it's your NI. I think it it lathers your NI with more NI and you go, how true? How universally, holistically, non-deductively true? I don't have to use my TI at all. Uh, it's like not being at work. It's like watching anime. Well, I think really the core the core issue is this. If Gen X feels right, then Sean knows what he's saying is bullshit and is saying it anyway. I don't afford to Sean that level of knowledge. Okay, so what do you think he actually is if this is just his whole game? If you think he's an ESFP, that's certainly been been put out there as a possibility before. Um, you know, there are a fair number of people who do think he's an ESFP. If you think he's an ENFJ who's fully aware that he's wrong and is doing it just to piss him off, piss her off, then why is he doing that? You know, it's like, no, ESFP is not a bad thing, but ESFP would explain the behavior without having to have an explanation that's reasoning based. They're just ESFPs, you know. And there, there's, there is no logic to it. But if he's not an ESFP, then there's some logic to it, whether it's good logic or bad logic or whatever. Um, I tend to agree with Leaf Tremor's take on things. Hi, Kiera L. What is popping in the chat? We're talking about whether. Uh, no, he does say he's an ENFJ. But so my point is, it would make more sense that he genuinely not understand TI well enough to type it um, than it would that he's trolling. Okay. Let's pull a bowl and think about it for a yeah. second, shall we? We can always transition to another topic as well. This one seems rather electric with energy. Mm -hmm. A couple of ESFPs. They're not all bad. I'm not saying ESFPs are all bad. I'm just saying when so so your position, Gen X, just to clarify, your position is he knew he was wrong and he chose to to do that anyway, right? How tall am I? I'm 6'4". Okay, I think you're giving him too much credit. Talk about the rise of socialism in the U.S. with Bernie Sanders and AFC. Um, okay, so then, then the next question comes, is he just a wicked person who likes to make people feel bad? 
Was then that the obvious conclusion to draw? Was he trying to assert dominance in some way? Or was he expressing some? <coughs> I mean, but look, here's the thing, Genexio. Regardless of what his reasoning was, my conclusion is clearly, and anybody else who was paying attention yesterday's conclusion was, oh, this guy doesn't know shit about typology. <laughs> so if he is he aware as well that he sold his own his own legitimacy as a reputation? Oh uh, yeah, it must be Peter. Um, because if he's aware that he's doing he's doing this just to be a dick, is he aware that it's also costing him his legitimacy as a, as somebody who talks about typology? Or would it, would, or did that take him by surprise? There you go, Peter. Maybe because he's a dick. Or just stubbornly wrong in ways that people get tired of listening to. I mean, there's a difference between trolling and being a dick, right? Like, <laughs> Leaf Tremor's often a dick, but he, I don't think he's trolling. <laughs> no offense, Leaf Tremor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's just the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> I agree with that. What you say there, Boba Fett. Intuitives need sensors more than the other way around. <laughs> what does six slot any look like? Elon Musk's any. That's what it looks like. Hey, I've got a great idea. Electric cars. Is Vermin Supreme live streaming right now? I fucking hate that guy. Okay, well, then what do we conclude, Gen Axial? That he's a bad person? No, you haven't been that much of a dick to me. You just have a... Uh... I guess you're more fighty than you are dickish. You're very fighty. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so why was he purposely giving this other human being who's a perfectly nice lady a bad experience? It's not like, look, who do you troll, Gen Axial? People come in here and can troll me. Why can they troll me? Because I'm the one with the YouTube channel. I'm the one who's who's making himself a public figure. I'm opening myself to trolling. That's trolling, right? Somebody with less power coming in and trying to get me with presumably more power. When you do it to another human being face-to-face -face in that fashion, then you're just being an asswipe, right? And probably need to be put in your place. She was an easy target. So he's a bully. He's not a troll. He's a bully. Is that what you're saying? Because basically, when you troll face to face, that's bullying. <sighs> Namsa? Personally, I like Mackenzie. She asks lots of challenging questions. And I don't know why anybody would want to make her feel bad or whatever. I get why people want to make me mad. 
Oh, I see. Jesse, is that how it works? Then if I continue to engage when you're being abusive, that I'm choosing to be a victim? What? I think not. So when I continue to engage the abusive person and call them out on it, I'm choosing to be a victim. The fuck? Why don't we hold the right person accountable, Gen X? Who is the person who should be held accountable here? Should it be McKenzie? You should, if you're going to be shitting on anybody, shit on Sean. No, I didn't say that, Lee Trimmer. Not that you said I said that. Okay, everybody's so freaking technically perfect around here. Okay, Gen X Seal, okay. Yeah. <sighs> this is turning into a bit of an insult to a rock fight. <laughs> oh, that's true. Is Mackenzie Hoffman even in the chat? No, I, but I brought it up. So what can I say? I said, here's a juicy topic. And I was right, but it got too juicy. It got too <laughs> It needs to go back on the barbecue for a while. <laughs> you know what I think? I think that one of the, um, I think you're right about the blue fish. One is a girl and one is a boy. I get the real, like, distinct feeling for some reason. If not, one of them. I don't think I said that, but I hope you're right. Oh. Well, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if they'll have babies. It would be great if they did. It would be. We yeah. got four cichlids, Gen X Hill. Here's a topic you and I can share some common interest in. Yeah. Now, we were careful, and we looked on the internet, and we also talked to the guy at the fish store. And we got two keyhole cichlids and two kind of like blue jack terrier, Jack Russell terriers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, again, you're dodging the point of whether that counts as trolling or bullying, which I think is a pretty key point. Anyway. Um, we have fish to eat the guppies. Um, horse... Jack Dempsey, yeah, maybe that's what they're called. Jack Dempsey's, they're blue and with black specks on them. They're cute, yeah, they're really cute. Those get big, really. I had a feeling he wasn't telling us something. Do you want more food, Peter? What are you honking about? Well, they're very small right now. Gonna send the only my only concern, Gen Exio, is that it gets big enough to hurt the I don't want it to get big enough to hurt the crayfish. Uh, I don't care how many guppies it eats. I just want the uh, who the heck's Peter? Okay. Let's go on a little let's go on a little adventure together, shall we? Oh my gosh, I had a feeling this guy wasn't telling something about the blue ones. They wanted to make a sale. Yeah, he did want to make a sale. That was obvious. He was one of those. Uh, you know, ever seen that movie like where I, dude, where I leave my car or whatever, where he goes through this drive-through and the lady's always like, "And what else? What else? What else?" Have you ever seen that? <laughs> it was like that. It, he was like that kind of lady, but he was a dude. Okay. Peter, did you leave already? Of course Peter left. Hey, Peter, come here. Let me throw some more shit out and maybe I'll come back. Yeah. Wait, Peter, come here. Throw you some more food too. Some more uh, cat food. Do you like this orange cat food? Mm. 
Or do you prefer the other kind of cat food? <clears throat> so here's Peter. Shot of him. Yeah. See his plumage. Oh, Peter, you're so silly. Have I ever told you you're a silly peacock friend? What do we say he is? ISTJ? Yeah, I think he might be ISTJ. Yeah, he has no qualms about getting food from other families, especially Chinese babies. He's got kind of iffy iffy, you know. He'll honk at us until we until we feed him. There's the fish tank over there. You, I can't yeah, really get can, that know, close to the fish tank. Is, well, yeah, you see it. You can see the tank. But you can't really see you can't really see our no. special guy. You couldn't see him right now anyway because oh, he's no, he's he's, he's in his shell. I hope those other don't bother him. They're not going to bother him. What, you want more food? You hear that, Peacock? Boy, he is a greedy schmeedy. And Pee just arrived, guys. Do you think apes have personality types? Probably. Yeah, they probably do. I did used to have chickens, yeah. When I lived in Laverne. Hands are ugly. They're just not as beautiful as the peacocks. Well, the way I see it is peacocks have it backwards. In human society, chicks are mostly the ones who waste their time with looking beautiful. Time. But in peacock society, the dudes waste all their time looking beautiful. So it seems to me they've got it backwards. I don't know. That's just me, my yeah, opinion. It's pretty much animal, like or birds in particular. The birds look more beautiful than the female birds. You'd never make a pen, a pen with a peahen feather? Actually, Boba Fett, you are so wrong. A peahen feather would probably make a much better a much better pen. They're much sturdier. They're brown. Uh, they're still big feathers. Yeah. And they're not ridiculous like a, <laughs> a male pea, <laughs> pea feather. Yeah, male pea. We do collect the male ones. We don't really collect the female ones. Yeah. Like we've got a big bowl of. The You're welcome, Peter. He said thank you. Um. <clears throat> The uh, we do have a bowl of peacock feathers that's over there on that other deck, and uh, in fact, I could probably show you our bowl of peacock feathers from here. They're kind of looking tattered at the moment, but you can see them probably. Can't really see them. It's too, yeah. They're too right. locked in the yeah. stuff. And yeah. Oh, there's a bowl of peacock feathers over there. Or yeah. I guess you might call it a vase of peacock feathers. I love peacock feathers too, actually. <laughs> the coolest ones are actually the little teeny ones. Oh, yeah. Like this. On their head. All right, check this out. All right. <laughs> that's, it's a nice color blue. That's neato. Hey, Peter. Hi, uh, Pee Pee. Oh, my gosh, you can see the P in the P. I'll bring a, I'll bring a big feather too to show you. Oh, we 
he must like that little birdsy stuff. Yep. Birds go crazy for it. So this is a, oh, a big one. Hi, Peter. We're talking about how great you are. And you see, it doesn't really have a lot of feathery part on it. Right? You know what I'm saying? It's mostly got this part that you see. The rest of it is just these little meows. Oh, Valerie Alwood. That sounds so beautiful. By a peacock? Thanks, Retro Vicky. Yeah. Uh, you got a peacock get you? Um, I have... Oh, labs. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> big difference. Yeah, I've never encountered any violence from the peacocks. They're generally rather timid. Although I will say they're not timid around um, around coyotes. What's really interesting to watch is a peacock showdown with the coyotes. Because, you know, they'll come at it with a, as a group. Then the coyote will push them back a little bit. And they'll come at them like this. Uh, yeah, and they, they make those calls. Um, one time, my aunt was staying with us when I was a little kid, and in the morning, she heard this, ah, ah, you know, and she actually got up and, and woke up my dad and said, you know, I think somebody's being, like, murdered or something, and it was just a peacock, of course. <laughs> the peacocks are straight-up killers. I mean... Yeah, <laughs> they might be to some things, but not to people. They're quite friendly yeah, around here. Yeah, they are. You know, they're Even not. To cars, like, they'll walk so slowly across the street. They're very entitled. <laughs> they assume that the cars are going to stop, which yeah, they, do, they do, you know. Sometimes the cars will honk, but usually everyone just goes, okay. <laughs> so, um, the thing is, there's... There's not much in the way of natural predator. You know, I think I think coyotes, maybe to a lesser extent dogs or cats, can get the little baby ones, maybe. Yeah, but, to a lesser extent dogs and cats. But uh, the big ones, there's nothing around that can eat them. No. And it's illegal to hunt them or uh, molest them. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not even supposed to feed them. But, you, well, at least you can't feed them you're not supposed to feed them in the streets. There are mountain lions and stuff and bobcats, but they're up higher in the foothills. So that probably limits the extent to which the uh, the population successfully moves into the mountains. There's also a lot less to eat in the mountains than there is uh, down here in the suburbs. This, you know, they originate and they center here at the Los Angeles County Arboretum. Where, uh, I mean, it's an arboretum. People go there, they take bread and whatever, and they feed the things. They're not supposed to, but they do it anyway, you know. Um, Can we show them Kiki? I'm here with our cat. Our beautiful, wonderful I kitty want friend. To get from. Oh, wonderful kitty friend. Oh, look at her. So magnificent. Yes. Arboretum, yeah. Arboretum is like a tree zoo. <laughs> It's kind of a funny yes, concept. Showing all the pets we have. You're one of them. Okay, other self, let me explain the way that story ends. I was attacked by a pack of stray dogs when I was a kid. Oh so I picked one of them up and swung him around and knocked over all the other dogs. <laughs> That's the way that story is supposed to end. <sighs> Don't you listen to you? I was um, I was scratched by a cat 
as a kid, so for a really long time, I had a phobia of cats. Delilah was very scared of the cat that we had when I was, when she was little, named Moitertens. Moitertens was an unsnipped male cat, and he was friendly, um, and also uh, could turn at a moment's notice. Like he'd come up to you and he'd be like, "Pet me." You'd pet him like three times. And be like, that's enough. <laughs> Scratch. Uh, <laughs> they all have such different personalities. Somebody, somebody, 10 USD on the super chat. I didn't even notice. Thank you if that happened. Oh, yes. Thank you. I didn't even notice it. I must have been. It didn't. I don't think so. No. What did I see? Um. <laughs> Good job on yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. He was. He was a dick. But you know what? Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about it. Jesus, is Lord, I. <laughs> I just don't know anything about it. After you kicked the ass of some strays, they went and got their friends. They came back with 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 this time with handguns. Bark, 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 bark. And you're like, okay, all right. God, these are some serious dogs. Well, here it is, eleven a.m., and that's I think the time. How do you describe T.E. Polar and how they managed to get confused? Um, well, like every time, it, it seems like every time Rachel describes one an instance of her own T.E. Polar, she's actually describing S.I. or something else, or S.E. or something. Or S.E. So it's me. like, uh, it's weird the way that people misidentify their own polar as something else. Like, so when they have a problem, they recognize they have a problem in their fourth slot. They recognize they might have a problem in their eighth slot. Um, but they tend to not recognize that the problem originates in their seventh. And when they do have a problem with their seventh, they'll attribute it to their eighth or their, or their fourth usually. So, you know, it's like this lady... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus is Lord. Thank you, you, Jesus is you Lord. figured it out. I'm very pleased to see that. I appreciate it greatly. You are clearly a man who is accustomed to putting things in collection plates, <laughs> <laughs> which I appreciate. You know, hey, I I had uh, I had a hi, Running Fox. I had a similar. Um, experience with Alcoholics Anonymous. I always put money in the collection plate at Alcoholics Anonymous. I figured if anybody deserved it, they did. <laughs> eh, paranoid, cynical, same thing. Um, look, like I said before, people are the identity they come in as. And I assume they are that person. If they're fooling me in some fashion, well, yeah, if they're consistent enough behaving as they behave, then that's who they are. Uh, I mean, you're very accepting of people as they are. Yeah, I don't need to know some greater truth about the person. You know, it's like... Hey, Bubble Puppy. I just want to say the following thing to all of the viewers here talking to famous people. You are the sunshine of my life. And when you're not here, it's nighttime. <laughs> During sleepy week. 
And I know that we all share the following sentiment together as well. None of us, we don't want to wait for our lives to be over before we have some more coffee this morning in these cups. Wow, thank you, Jesus is Lord. It's so nice. We got another five dollars. Thanks. I gotta say, I'm gonna say something that's, that I didn't really ever expect me to say. It does matter what brand of powdered creamer you get. So sometimes you can go to, you know, you can go to Smart and Final. Thanks, Jesus is Lord. You rock. Appreciate it. Um, you know, we've gone to Smart and Final before, and we get a, uh, we get the cheap creamer, and we, we use a lot of coffee creamer. <laughs> but then one day we went to Costco with my dad, and we got this big thing of um, coffee mate coffee creamer. I got to tell you, it is better than the non-name brand coffee creamer. You would like it to be the case <laughs> that coffee creamers were interchangeable, but there's no difference. I think the nameless ones are, you know, you can just get whatever nameless brand, but um, they're all the same. But really, when it comes to like creaminess, coffee mate. Coffee mate wins. Mm -hmm. Coffee mate wins the day. What is creamer? This stuff. Now, a lot of people prefer to have any number of things. In fact, they don't usually even offer this at like Starbucks, right? You can get milk, you can get half and half, you can get um, soy milk, you can get almond milk, but you can't get this. But this is the shit, okay? <laughs> this is the best way to cream your coffee is this powder stuff right here. I will never forget Delilah discovering our coffee creamer habit in Hawaii. <laughs> She's like, I don't understand. <laughs> We'd wake up and it would be gone. <laughs> How do you guys drink so much of that? It it makes your um coffee have a faintly malted milkshake taste. Yes. Like, really, they do advertise it well with the biscotti, like, on there. Like, dunking a cookie into it, it would mm. be delicious. Yeah. Okay, I want to thank everybody for being here today. I'm going to wrap this up because we have an anime to watch, and then there's a basketball game on that I I want to watch. So too. we're going to uh, enjoy a, probably a pretty chill day today. I don't think so. I have any work on the schedule. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, that is nice. And uh, I'll probably live stream again later tonight. See you later. And thank, especially thanks to uh, uh, I love, love Jesus, whatever. Jesus, Jesus is Lord, Lord um, for his contributions. Have a great day. Hi, guys.